Hello everyone, welcome to my new video in my Mathematics Essential series. This video is on how to calculate the sine and cosine of the special angles. Okay? So I will write down what the special angles are and explain why they are special. And it turns out that once you know how to calculate the sine and the cosine of the special angles, there's a lot of other things you can do as well. So the special angles are in radians, zero, pi over six. So these are in ascending order pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. So that's what they are. Typically in a textbook, pi does not get included as one of the special angles. And maybe that's because pi radians, which is 180 degrees, could never be the size of one of the angles of a triangle because the sum of the three angles of any triangle must add to 180 degrees, which is just pi radians. Okay, but you might say, by similar or for similar reasons, zero could never be the angle or the size of one of the angles of a triangle. But it turns out that in other kinds of geometries, uh, many quite unintuitive things are allowed. Okay, there are many different kinds of geometries. Okay, in some geometries, for instance, uh, triangles don't even have straight lines. Uh, parallel lines actually are parallel, yet they can intersect. Um, yeah, all sorts of counterintuitive things can happen in other geometries. Okay, so it turns out that in some geometries, there are such things as triangles that have uh, an angle in them and the size of that angle is zero. Well, all, all triangles have angles in them, but there are such things as triangles for which one of the angles is zero, okay? And they're called degenerate triangles. So maybe that's why zero gets included. I'm not sure. You know, to call them special angles is a uh, convention, but not entirely without reason, okay? What makes these angles special is that the sine and cosine of these angles can be calculated exactly, okay? You don't have to round off to some amount of decimal places or anything like that. Okay, that's actually true about pi as well, okay? Um, but for some reason, pi doesn't get included, okay? Pi gets a lot of fame and glory in mathematics anyway, so perhaps it's okay for it to sit aside for once and uh, let some other numbers live in the limelight for a bit, okay? But in order to calculate the sine and the cosine of these special angles, you will need to use what's called the special triangles. There are two of them. So here is one, okay? They're both right angle triangles, okay? And this one has two side lengths of one and a hypotenuse with length root two and two angles of pi on four, okay? It would make sense that both of these angles are the same size because they both span a side of the triangle that have the same length. Both of them span a side length of one, okay? So I'll also write here what they are in degrees. So zero is obvious, zero radians is obviously zero degrees. Uh, pi on six is 30 degrees. Okay, pi on four is 45 degrees. Pi on three is 60 degrees. Pi on two is 90 degrees. And pi is 180 degrees. But remember this one, this one's not typically considered one of the special angles. Okay, uh, the other special triangle is this. Okay, it's also a right angle triangle. And it has a side length here of one, a hypotenuse of length two, and the remaining side length is the square root of three. This angle is pi over six, and this angle is pi over three. Okay, now in order to calculate the sine and the cosine of these special angles, okay, some people try to memorize the trigonometric circle. All right, and I will do a video on the trigonometric circle in the future because every mathematics student or anyone doing mathematics for uh, for science or engineering or something else 
uh, should understand how the trigonometric circle works. So they should understand the trigonometric circle, but I think uh, memorizing it is completely unnecessary because it turns out that uh, you can do everything, everything that memorizing the trigonometric unit circle enables you to do can be done by memorizing these two triangles instead. Okay, if you were to memorize the trigonometric unit circle, that comes down to, I, I think, memorizing about 30 numbers, 30 values. Uh, and I think it's much easier to just memorize the information of two triangles instead of 30 different numbers. But I'll construct the trigonometric unit circle in another video. Anyways, so once you can calculate the sine and cosine of these special angles, you can actually calculate the sine and cosine of any integer multiple of these special angles. So for instance, if you can calculate the sine and the cosine of pi on 4, then you can also calculate the sine and the cosine of 3 pi on 4, um, you know, 7 pi on 4. Um, you know, take for instance uh, 2 pi on 4, but that just equals pi on 2, and that already is one of the special angles, okay? Uh, if you could calculate the sine and the cosine of pi on 3, then you could also calculate the sine and the cosine of 5 pi on 3. Okay, so for the multiples of the special angles, other than multiple of 1, uh, I'll save that to, for another video so that this one isn't too long. But basically, if you're going to calculate the sine or the cosine of one of the, you know, some integer multiple of a special angle, for instance, uh, you're going to calculate the sine or the cosine of, uh, let's say, 5 pi on 6, then all you would need is uh, this special triangle. Okay, you just need one of the special triangle and then to draw a cast diagram to find out whether your answer is positive or negative. That's all you need to do in addition to just finding the sine and the cosine, or in addition to just using the special triangles. Okay, so I'll go through and I'll find the sine and the cosine of the special angles. I'll also uh, do them for pi, okay? And for, it's only really for three of them that we'll need to do any work because from a unit circle, okay, we know that the cosine of zero is one and the sine of zero is zero. So that can really just be derived by inspection on a unit circle. You can just consider a unit circle in your head, consider an angle of zero, and you would know what the x value and the y component, I should say, of the coordinates of this point would be. Okay, now similarly for pi on two. Okay, you know that the sine or the cosine of pi on two is zero and that the sine of pi on two is one. Okay, for pi, okay, so an angle of pi. All right, you know that the cosine of pi is negative one, okay, or you could just derive it from a unit circle by considering it mentally, considering a unit circle mentally. You know that the sine of pi is zero, and now this angle here, okay, would be three pi on two. You know that the cosine of three pi on two is zero, and you know that the sine of three pi on two is negative one, okay? So three pi on two was not one of the special angles. All right, but that one's still pretty easy. And you know what, if you went all the way around to two pi, that just gets you back to that point here, and you already know what the sine and the cosine of those values are, okay? So I'm just going to start writing out the cosine and sine of the special angles. So the cosine of zero is one, the sine of zero is zero, okay? The cosine of pi on two is equal to zero, and the sine of pi on two is equal to one. Now, the cosine of pi is equal to negative one, and the sine of pi is equal to zero. Okay, even though three pi on two isn't one of the special angles, I'll just do it. Um, because that one can just be quite easily derived from a unit circle. In fact, pretty much just by inspection. Um, so the cosine of 3 pi on 2 is equal to 0, and the sine of 3 pi on 2 is equal to negative 1. Okay, and now the cosine of 2 pi 
Okay, well, that just gets you back to where you started. Okay, so that would equal the cosine of 0, which is just 1. And for the sine of 2 pi, that just gets you back to where you started as well. Okay, so the sine of 2 pi is equal to the sine of 0, which is just 0. Okay, so my long-winded point is that all of these follow quite directly just from the unit circle. Okay, if you just imagine a unit circle in your head um, for any of these angles. Okay, uh, it's not too difficult to just determine what the sine or the cosine would be. All right, or you could just draw a unit circle quickly and, you know, label what the coordinates of these points would be and just read them off. There's no real uh, calculation necessary, which means that the only ones we really have to worry about calculating are pi on 6, which is 30 degrees. Okay, so pi on 6. Okay. Pi on 4, which is 45 degrees. I get it right there, and then I take my hand off, and it changes value, the ruler, I mean. <laughs> changes angle. Okay, so this here uh, is pi on 4, that's 45 degrees. And then pi on 3. So temperamental. Okay, pi on 3 which is that angle there. That's pi on 3, which is 60 degrees. So 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. These are really the only ones that we need to calculate. And then all of the integer multiples, okay, so for example, you know, this would be pi on 3, and then 2 pi on 3, 3 pi on 3 would be just pi, and then 4 pi on 3. So this angle here that goes all the way around to here, that would be 4 pi on 3. So that's an example of what I mean by the integer multiples of these special angles. Once you can calculate the sine and the cosine of pi on 3, you could also calculate the sine and the cosine of 5 pi on 3. And then you just need to draw a cast diagram to determine whether your answer is positive or negative. So for now, I'm just going to worry about the special angles rather than integer multiples of them. I'll do multiples in the next video. But let's do the cosine of pi on 6. Okay, so the cosine of pi on 6, right, well, first I need to draw the special triangle that ink to shape function doesn't seem to be doing what it's meant to. There we go. Okay, I draw the special triangle that has an angle of pi on 6. So this angle here is pi on 3. This angle here is pi on 6. Okay, the side length is 1. The hypotenuse has a length of 2. And the remaining side has a side length of root 3. Okay, cosine of pi on 6 is just adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's pi on 6. This is the adjacent. That's the hypotenuse. So this is just going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over root 2. Okay. Now the sine of pi on 6 is just going to equal the opposite side length over the length of the hypotenuse, and you can see from the special triangle that that's just one half. Okay, well, let's do the cosine of pi on 3. Whilst we're here, so the cosine of pi on 3, because we've got a special triangle here, uh, is just going to be adjacent over hypotenuse of pi on 3. So the adjacent side to pi on 3 is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. Now the sine of pi on 3 is just going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be root 3 on 2. Okay, so these angles, you can calculate the sine and the cosine of them exactly, just by remembering these special triangles. And you can see that the cosine of pi on 6 is equal to the sine of pi on 3, and the sine of pi on 6 is equal to the cosine of pi on 3. Okay. All right, so all that's left to do is pi on 4. So consider the cosine of pi on 4. And to find this, I just draw the 
a special triangle that has an angle of pound four, it actually has two angles of pound four, and pound four is just 45 degrees, okay, and since both of these angles are the same size, they must span side lengths of the same lengths, okay, and the length of the hypotenuse is root two, this angle is obviously pi on two, or 90 degrees, because it's a right angle triangle, okay, now the cosine of pi on four is just adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's just one over the square root of two. And if you've watched my video on rationalizing denominators, whenever you are doing trigonometry, it's okay to, in fact, preferable to leave your answer like this and not rationalize your denominator. Because when you leave your answer like this, you can read off the properties of the triangle. I mean, imagine if you just saw this expression that said the cosine of pi on four is equal to one over root two, and you hadn't seen the triangle. Well, then you could still say, okay, well, this corresponds to a triangle, okay, a right angle triangle with an angle of pi over four radians for which the length of the adjacent side must be one and the length of the hypotenuse must be the square root of two. And then you could go on and find out the rest of the information about the triangle using trigonometry, okay? And rationalizing your denominator like this. Okay, don't worry if you don't know what I mean by rationalizing the denominator. I have a video on it uh, somewhere else in the series. Okay, but you, if you if you went through with it, you would get this. Okay, and it turns out that you know the numerator does not correspond to the length of the adjacent side anymore, and the denominator does not correspond to the length of the hypotenuse anymore. Okay, so that's why it's okay to leave your answer unrationalized. It's okay to leave your denominator unrationalized. Okay or just as it is, unrationalized, I don't think is a word. Anyways, let's find uh, the sine of pi over 4. Like I keep saying, English is important, but math is importanter. Uh, okay, the sine of pi on 4, okay, may not surprise you to learn that, well, the cosine of pi on 4 is just adjacent over hypotenuse, but notice that since sine of pi on 4 is opposite over hypotenuse, it's going to be the same thing, okay? So the sine of pi on 4 is going to be 1 over the square root of 2, just like the cosine of pi on 4 is, okay? So the cosine of pi on 4 and the sine of pi on 4 are equal. Now, this is why the tangent of 45 degrees or pi on 4 just equals 1, okay? Because the tangent of pi on 4 is equal to the sine of pi on 4 over the cosine of pi on 4, okay? But this is just 1 over root 2 over 1 over root 2, and that's just the same thing over the same thing, so that's 1, okay? Now, one more thing that I'll do before I wrap this video up. Uh, consider, for instance, the tangent of pi over 2. And if you've seen my video on understanding the graph of y equals the tangent of theta, okay, you might remember that at odd integer multiples of pi on 2, the graph y equals the tangent of theta was undefined for values of theta equal to n pi on 2, where n is some odd integer okay so for any odd integer multiple of pi on 2 okay if theta equals n pi over 2 10 of n pi over 2 is undefined so long as n is an odd integer so we actually shouldn't expect this to be defined okay and if we go ahead and try and calculate it we will find that this is just the sine of pi over 2 over the cosine of pi over 2, okay? And if you consider a unit circle, uh, you will determine that the sine of pi on 2 is equal to 1, and the cosine of pi on 2 is equal to 0, and division by 0 is undefined. So there is no such thing as the tangent of pi over 2. Okay, so I didn't really mention it explicitly, 
at least I don't remember mentioning it explicitly, but once you can find the sine and the cosine of these special angles, you can find the tangent of these special angles, okay? But it's not just the tangent, it's obviously everything else that's defined in terms of sine and cosine. So for instance, the reciprocal trigonometric functions, cosecant of theta, which equals one over the sine of theta. Okay, you could also find the secant of one of the special angles because secant is just one over the cosine of theta. And you could also find the cotangent of theta because that's just equal to one over the tangent of theta, or, you know, when you're working by hand, it's often easier to work with this equivalent expression, the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. So these reciprocal trigonometric functions are all defined in terms of sine and cosine. So once you can find the sine and the cosine of the special angles, you can find the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent of these special angles. You can find the reciprocal trigonometric values of the special angles. Okay, uh, so remember, all you need is to remember the special triangles, okay? Many of these trigonometric values can just be determined by considering a unit circle. So for instance, the sine and the cosine of zero, pi on two, pi, uh, three pi on two, even though that's not really a special angle, and two pi and pi, they're not really special angles, but those ones are easy to determine from a unit circle. Uh, yeah, and these are the special angles. I was going to cross these off as I went through them, but I didn't. Okay. Well, if you found this video helpful, give it a like. Feel free to share the video. If anything was confusing or you have a curiosity, don't hesitate to post your question in the comments. And if you'd like a notification when I upload a new video, subscribe to my channel. Until the next video, bye for now.